There's a big fuss about drones lately. Drones that are flying in restricted airspace over military bases around airfields. And then you have governments saying, oh, we don't know what it is, we don't know who it is, where they come from. And I don't understand this because it is pretty simple to track them down. I'm a telecoms engineer, so I have some experience with radio frequencies, SATCOM, and so on, even including jamming practices. So here's a story on the drones. So we got several types of drones. You have what we call the consumer drone. Now the consumer drone is small. It has a limited action radius, so it can't fly that far away from the pilot because the pilot is typically on the ground. And the aircraft is controlled by a radio link from the pilot's device towards the aircraft. And this is how you fly those. They can also fly autonomously. So basically you can load in a flight plan, which is nothing more than a set of GPS coordinates. And then the aircraft will fly the coordinates the way you want it to fly, the way it's been programmed. So you don't need control from the ground on that. It will take off by itself, it will land by itself, and it will either in flight, collect the data locally to local storage inside the the aircraft or it will send it down to a device on the ground. That's it. That's all what these things can do. Typically they can only fly for about 30 to 40 minutes if they are lucky and if the weather conditions allow for it. Now then the question is how do you intercept those? Well that's pretty simple. The frequencies that are used to control the aircraft from the ground by the pilot, those frequencies are very well known because after all it's a radio link and that is so easy to jam. So we can jam that frequency. And jamming means we're gonna send a signal which is stronger than the actual control signal of the aircraft and thereby the aircraft will lose complete control and it will fly off somewhere. It might even crash for that matter. That's one thing. On the other hand, if that little aircraft is flying on GPS instructions, then the radio link Jamming won't help you much, but then you probably want to jam the GPS, which is also very well possible to do. But the better way would be trying to find out who it is. And the way to do that is by sending out your own drone, shadow that suspicious drone, and follow it, because at some moment in time, it has to land somewhere. So then you know who it is and where it is and what they do, and you can interrogate those people and so on. So that's a very easy way. Like I said, if you want to be destructive, you jam it. That's how simple that is. But then we have the other type, the pro type, the big ones, like the one that was recently seen around an airport or an airfield, which has a wingspan of three meters. Now those, they can last in the air for many, many hours, 10, 15 hours or more. They can fly a long distance and they will record either data, video, sound, whatever, infrared, locally, or they send it back to wherever the pilot is. Now, typically the pilot is not going to be around on the ground. He's going to be far away. So how do they get here and who are they? Well, and should we take him down? My opinion is, well, first of all, I want to find out who they are, who is behind it before I start shooting them down. Now those aircraft, they can't come from Russia, somewhere in Moscow. It's too far, they can't fly that far and neither can they fly all the way back. That's kind of impossible. But what can happen is that they are being put inside a truck, they are carried over land to wherever the target is and then they are released. Very much so like what the Ukrainians did when they attacked that Russian airfield. They drove it in a truck and then they released the drones locally and then they piloted it to their targets. That most likely is the case. But even then, the pilot will not be here locally. Most likely the pilot is somewhere back in the country of origin, whatever that is. And I mentioned Russia, but it might not be Russia. It could be any country, basically. And that's where the pilot sits, who's going to fly the airplane. So once the airplane is airborne, 
the pilot will actually fly it over the area where it needs to be and therefore the pilot is going to need GPS coordinates. It needs to know where that aircraft is. So in other words, that pro aircraft really has a GPS receiver for its navigation because the days of radio beacons are long gone for navigation. So they still need a GPS receive signal to find exactly where they are in terms of navigation. But how does the pilot actually steers the aircraft? How does he do that? If he's far away, maybe a thousand, two thousand, maybe on the other side of the world, how does he control that aircraft? Well, he does that through what we call the 4G or the 5G data channels. So 5G is well known. It's like our GSMs. And you can check that easily on your GSM to see on which network you are. And we all know as well that you can browse the internet um, if you have mobile data on, on your smartphone. Well, there's like a little smartphone inside that drone. So on any smartphone, you have typically a data connection with 4G or 5G, and you can see that on the top on your iPhone or your smartphone. But if you want to know the details on an iPhone at least, uh, you can dial that number as you see right there. Star 3001 hash 12345 hash star. Dial that number and you get all the information of the service provider on 4G or 5G. And as you can see, we are running in LTE mode, band 20. The bandwidth is 10 megahertz and we have some signal strengths as well. So that is typically um, what you have on your smartphone and the drone has a smartphone on board so it can do the same kind of connections allowing you to connect to the internet. And that smartphone will register with a cellular tower wherever it's flying, over 5G most likely, not 4G because the data is limited on 4G, but the data band on 5G is, is quite good. So they will register to a tower, you know, maybe around Brussels, something like that. And then they will actually set up a virtual private network all the way back over the internet. So from the aircraft to the ground is 5G. Once it's on the ground, you get on the internet and then you can go wherever you want to go in the world. Now, of course, it is important that that data is encrypted. And that's why they are using a virtual private network, which is an encryption method, a tunnel, let's say, where all the data, be it the flight data, but also be it the data which is recorded while it's flying, the images, you know, all that is being transmitted back to its source. And that's going to be encrypted and sent over the VPN. Now, any VPN has a source and a destination IP address. And those are public IP addresses because otherwise you cannot route this VPN through the internet. And all what you need to do really uh, is intercept that signal. If you can intercept the drone signal on the 5G, and that is not all that hard because they are not going to have a local GSM number. So you can check that. And then you look on the internet on the way out uh, from the tower. What is the IP address of any possible VPN? And you can trace those VPNs. So you know, where is this going to? So there's lots of tools that can scan for this. There's lots of tools that can do packet decodes. Most likely you will not be able to decode the, the stream, the VPN but you will know what the source and the destination IP address is. And at that moment in time, you can do a couple of things. You can inhibit the aircraft by terminating the VPN session, but you can also use a 5G jammer, but for that you probably will need a helicopter to fly out and then have a jammer on that. And on the other hand, uh, you might just do nothing and just shadow that aircraft and try to spoof of whatever they are sending. So I would not want to make that aircraft crash right away because you want to have more information who's behind it. And that is why you would either shadow that aircraft with a helicopter or one of the police drones we have or one of the military drones we have and we can just follow it. So we'll see where it goes. We don't need to shoot it down. Or we can actually um, spoof or intercept like a man in the middle arrangement on the VPN and see what they are transmitting and where it's going to. Or in the last resort, you can decide to bring it down and you can bring it down by jamming the 5G. 
Now, some of them might even be more smarter, but they, I think they will be a little bit bigger if they're going to use Spacelink. And if you use Spacelink, then you have a satellite connection. And then it becomes more difficult to interfere because you will have to jam um, the Spacelink uh, frequencies, which is probably not an easy thing to do. But I'm quite sure that uh, those people that operate Spacelink, and unfortunately that's Elon Musk, or fortunately it's Elon Musk, they most likely can trace down uh, what the signal is on that aircraft and where it's going to. So all by all, technically, it is not very complicated to get these things down and to find out who's behind it. Now, in my personal opinion, I would be more interested in who's behind it and what are they collecting. And in a last resort, I probably would want to take them out of the sky if they create a risk. Now, a lot of people say, well, <coughs> that's all hunky-dory, but we can't detect them. And, and, and you're right, the consumer craft you cannot detect. They are too small. They are about the size of a bird, so the radar will not pick it up. But the three meter span of an aircraft, that most likely you can already start detecting. So maybe we need to spend some more time on more accurate radars that can detect these smaller aircraft. They must have a signature in the sky. They must. Anyhow, um, I hope that clarifies things a bit, and I don't think we need to be afraid. There are ample of means to control it, to check it out, to find out who it is, and if necessary, to bring it down. On the other hand, there are also some more basic and rough methods to do it. You could even have a net, a steel net, underneath a helicopter that you can release and drop it on top of the drone, and then it's going to collapse and fall down somewhere but it could cause serious damage on the ground. So maybe that's not what you want to do initially. So thank you for listening to some proper rationale and common sense. And don't get scared because there's nothing to be scared of. Thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.